Joining us is Ken Meyer Jr., who has been making art for the gaming community for several decades now. Today we'll be talking about his career, some of his favorite and ongoing art projects, NFTs, and his work for Versus. To start things off, Ken, why don't you tell us about some of your pieces for Versus? One, which is called Mechanics. I think it's actually just called Mechanics, but somehow it got changed to Mechanics something, I can't remember. Um, but that was actually based on just this old black and white a uh, photograph that I clipped from a newspaper many years ago, probably like, I will, geez, maybe 30 years ago, you know, in wherever I happen to live at the time, and I've lived all over. And I just thought it was a really funny and, and neat image that I'm sure I would use for reference at some point in the future. Um, and although I never really used it for anything like a story or anything, I just, I did do a painting and it was an acrylic sort of a, just a, a trial uh, um, for me to work with acrylics because at that point I hadn't really worked with a ton of acrylics. And I think it might've been in a class when I went back to school. And when, when I went to school the first time, we, like most people do right out of college, uh, I was a really crappy student and I missed a lot of classes and slept in a lot and just played a lot of tennis and stayed up too late and stuff like that. Um, but then I went back to school in around 2000 at a, an art school in Savannah. And one of the classes uh, I think was a painting class of some sort. Uh, and I just thought this was a really funny image. So I decided to paint it. And then it's just been sort of sitting around uh, until Versus came along and thought, oh yeah, that, that's kind of interesting, which kind of surprised me to be honest. You know, it's almost such a mundane image to me uh, in and of itself, uh, but it is kind of goofy and, and, and funny. So I did like that one and the way it turned out. Well, as far as some of my uh, other pieces, uh, one of them, um, let's see, that was called, oh, Gift for the Fairy. Um, that's actually my youngest daughter, uh, Avery. Um, and that was, that was one photograph and done uh, probably like, five or six years ago. I think she was around uh, maybe 10 or something when I did it. And I just, you know, just, just like most parents, I just took a bunch of pictures of her uh, over the years. And I think this one I actually probably took purposely for this painting. Um, and it was actually for a sort of a, a variation of, of uh, this thing called Inktober. Every October online when artists uh, post artwork, uh, they try and do a, a, a drawing or a painting a day in ink uh, in October. And I must have had some spare time because I decided to just keep going ahead the next month. And I just did my own version. Uh, and I set up a folder in, um, I think in um, Facebook and I did a painting a day. And I also did one for November, I did one for December, but this was just called a painting a day, one any given month. Um, and I think it's uh, ink and acrylics. Uh, and also it ended up being used later uh, by Caliber Comics, who's a, a comics company that I've done a lot of work for over the years, mainly in the 90s. There was a, there's an anthology called Negative Burn uh, that I've done a lot of stuff for and they used it as a cover. So that was kind of cool. And you know, it's nice for Avery too to uh, be on a cover. I also used it for a Magic the Gathering token card which are these, I don't know, I don't wanna go in the explanation of all that stuff, but anyway, so I, I've used it several times. I, I don't have any trouble reusing my images, doctoring them, whatever um, that's necessary. I heard you have a sketchbook filled with portraits of other artists. Can you tell me a little more about that? I have this sketchbook that I started a few years ago that is composed of portraits of other artists that I either know or admire. Um, and I was able to include her because she's started to do a lot of artwork over the last couple of years uh, as well. Do you have any portraits in there of other artists that worked on Versus? I don't think so, uh, but they certainly can be. You know, if you decide you want to use them, um, I probably would just have to ask them if it's okay. But yeah, I've done, uh, I've done fellow magic artists. I've done artists that are just you know, like way, way up there. Uh, people that I really, really admire, like uh, say Frank Frazetta or Bill Sienkiewicz, people like that. Um, 
and I have it behind me. It's behind the sheet on my drawing table, uh, just sitting there. I, sometimes I take it with me to conventions, but not that many people pick it up and look through it. So it just basically sits there. And I just, I just do a new painting in there whenever I have spare time and I just feel like it for whatever reason. There's probably, there's probably 30 or 40 different paintings in there so far. Can you tell me the story behind your versus painting called The Citadel Burns? That's actually sort of an alternate version of a painting that I did also when I went back to school. I had a, um, I think it was a color drawing class or something. And a convention was coming up that I was gonna go to. So uh, I, had to do, I had to do a painting that had to do with a complementary color scheme. In this case, it's violet and yellow. Um, and I had this upcoming convention, so I wanted to do something with sort of a fantasy aspect to it. And also, for some reason, I wanted to do some sort of uh, social commentary thing. And uh, it wasn't that long after 9-11 that I did this painting. Uh, so the original painting has looks more or less the same as the one that's that's in the game, except it has a mosque and the remnants of the Twin Towers behind her. Uh, so it's sort of a commentary on an eye for an eye is what the painting is called, the original painting. Uh, but then I think there was one of these magic tournaments that uh, I go to uh, overseas that I didn't actually attend. I think it was in France or Italy or something. And they wanted a new image for a play mat, which is like a big mouse pad that these guys lay their cards down on when they play. Uh, so I changed, I, I did a new painting basically uh, with the same girl in front, but with the uh, Colosseum uh, behind or the Roman Colosseum. So that would mean that would be in Italy since the Colosseum's in, in Rome. So uh, that is the story behind that piece. That also was one of those things that ended up being used by Caliber Comics as a cover for uh, this, I think it was like the best of negative burn or something like that. Um, so that was nice, I got a couple of uses out of it. You've been an artist for a long time and have a large body of work. Tell me more about your creative process. What is something that your fans who love your art might be interested to know? Yeah, my creative process, well, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll read or hear other artists talk about their process and, and uh, the reason why they do this and that. And a lot of them have really uh, ornate, uh, intelligent answers to stuff like this. But I always feel like, sometimes I feel, it, to me, it sort of feels kind of uh, like someone pontificating uh, unnecessarily. Uh, and maybe that's just me because my methods and my reasoning is usually more based in sort of illustration in the commercial art world. You know, usually, a lot of times the reason I do something is because I got a job and they need something done, you know, uh, rather than, oh, the muse struck me from above and I have to do this painting right now. You know, I don't have a lot of that, to be honest. The methods, the actual physical methods are like a lot of artists. You know, I, I'll do a bunch of thumbnail sketches if I actually have an idea that, that someone's given me to do um, and then present it to them and let them choose. And I might do some color roughs uh, and I might even let them see the pencil drawing before I paint it to see if there's something that I missed, which can happen. Um, so usually it's doing the sketches, uh, doing the drawing on whatever surface I'm doing, using whatever medium that I use. And that varies depending on just maybe what I'm using a lot at the time or what I think works for any given piece. Lately for the last six, seven years, I've been using uh, acrylic ink a lot uh, because it sort of works like watercolor until it's dry and then you, you can't mess it up because it's acrylic. Uh, but it's also very, stays very saturated while you're working on it. Um, and in fact, that piece behind me now on the screen is acrylic ink. And it also does interesting things as you flow one color into another or ink into water or whatever. And a lot of times that's my favorite part of any given painting is just this abstract area where the, the paint has sort of done what it wanted to do. Uh, 
I played around with some abstract stuff uh, using that method only. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of times my favorite part of any given painting is some little area in the background where the, the paint did something interesting. Uh, so that's pretty much the creative process. Although one thing that I should say too is that I do tend to use a lot of photography as reference, whether it's something I take myself or find on the internet or ask uh, photographer friends to see if they'll let me uh, use what, what they've done or even every once in a while shoot something new. I just, I just did a painting for a role-playing game book and it was one that I really want to do a really good job on and have some fun with. So I had a, a friend of mine get together with another uh, friend that I know and shoot some actual photographs and he's a really good photographer. So it gave me a really good basis uh, for the painting because my stuff tends to be pretty realistic in nature. Uh, so I, I want to base that on sound ideas of, of shadow um, and volume and all these various things that go into an actual three-dimensional object. Are there any art projects from over the years that you like the most? Or maybe a project that stands out? Oh, well, one thing that I did recently uh, that I actually could probably get up behind me in a minute or two if you really wanted to, but uh, I did this mural for a friend of mine who has a, um, a game store, like a comic and game store. Uh, originally it was gonna be a standard mural on the wall kind of thing, but then I decided ah, that's, I don't know if I wanna to have to drive down to this place and you know be there like many days in a row doing it. So I ended up doing it on canvas and it's about 15 feet wide by five feet high which is easily by far the biggest thing I've ever done. Uh, so that was a real, uh, I mean, it was a real experience for several reasons. I mean, physically it was different because you know, you're doing a lot of reaching uh, to paint, um, whether it's on a wall, which it was when I was drawing it or on a table when I slowly unrolled the canvas bit by bit to paint the thing. Um, and it was a lot of subjects because it was basically, it was for his game store. So I had all these characters from all these different games sort of having this one big battle. Um, so it was, it was, it was, I didn't know if I'd be able to do it, to be honest. I didn't know if I'd be able to pull it off because it was just so big. Um, but it, it turned out pretty good. It's, it's up in his store. He's got it on stretcher bars and stuff. So it looks really nice. Um, that's one recent thing that was really uh, an experience. So why did you want to be part of Versus? Well, I'm excited to be a part of Versus for a couple different reasons. I mean, first off, it's interesting to be part of a, a sort of new revolution in delivery method, I guess is one way to put it. Um, I'll be honest though, uh, if I'm totally honest, when I first started hearing about NFTs, I thought, what the hell is wrong with these people? Why would anyone want this stuff? You know, what are they gonna do with it? It's just so goofy and such a, I guess, a collector mentality, you know? Oh yeah, I have one of these and you don't. Um, and I still sort of feel that way to be honest, but the fact that this is a game obviously takes it to another level. Um, so you, you're gonna invest a lot more into it, um, not monetarily, but just your, your, your brain. And a little bit that I watched of the, the uh, creator of the game and the methods behind the game seemed um, pretty interesting and uh, really well thought out. Um, another reason is you know the other artists involved. Uh, I, I, I know several of the other artists, some of them relatively well, fellow Magic the Gathering artists, for example. Um, and there's one or two um, like Stephen Martinair, I, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but anyway, someone who, who I really admire um, for his, his skill set and the images he creates, um, and that's probably that's probably the the two main things that uh, that drew me to it, just to be part of something new. NFTs have taken the art world by storm. As an experienced artist with a long career. What do you think about NFTs? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I first started seeing posts about NFTs, and I think one of the first things I saw was some guy who said he made like a couple million dollars on 
NFTs and, and they showed the work and a lot of the work was incredibly crappy. Uh, just stuff that he had maybe put together in about 30 seconds. And somehow someone somewhere decided they wanted to own the NFT of this. I don't know if that person's been committed yet, but if not, they probably should be. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a whole new arena for me. And obviously my age is, is a factor in that because I'm not as uh, technologically um, sound as, as I'm sure you guys are. Uh, so there's, there's a skepticism that comes from, from the age factor probably too. But, uh, but I have to acknowledge too that I'm sure I am very ignorant of a lot of these things uh, because of that reason. Uh, so, so I'm willing to, to take someone's uh, word that it's, it's a legitimate thing and uh, that a lot of people are interested in it. Many people are skeptical about crypto, and NFTs have caused some controversy. Some are concerned about crypto's environmental impact which is why Versus is using the Tezos blockchain, which is a lightweight environmentally friendly blockchain. Well, you know, that was one of the things that, that I really was happy to hear when uh, I think when you might have told me about this or someone mentioned it within one some of the paraphernalia that, that the artist got. Because when I started learning more about NFTs, but probably just as much crypto in general. Uh, I mean, I'm still very, very skeptical about crypto. And again, for probably some of the ignorant reasons that I cited earlier. Um, but uh, the, the thing that really disturbed me about NFTs was that environmental impact uh, that I have heard uh, can come about from just the mining aspect. And I only really know some of the terms of, the, of this. I have no knowledge of the actual, actual processes or anything. Um, that's just beyond my brain power. Um, but the fact that Versus has uh, done their work to make this uh, as little, have as little impact as possible, use methods, I guess, use the actual currency that uh, um, has that uh, effect is, is really laudable and is a big factor probably of how I'm involved in the first place because I think if, even though I'm as money hungry as the next person, uh, if, it, if it would have been a company that paid no attention to that, it may have been a deal breaker uh, for me, um, even though I, I need money as much as the next person. Uh, so that's been a really good thing to learn uh, in this process. Environmental sustainability is something we take seriously, it's even in our company's charter. So using the proof of work blockchain was out of the question for us. There's a big difference in the energy used between Tezos and other blockchains. Some blockchains use an entire country's worth of energy every year, where Tezos only uses the energy equivalent of a single household. My next question is. What, in a nutshell, do you like about Versus? The fellow artists, the uh, attention to um, the environment uh, and the game aspect um, and being part of something new. Um, I mean, because, you know, when I first started doing this project and I, some of the other artists were posting about it, uh, I, I could see that some of them were getting some very negative comments from people because it has to do with the world of crypto and the world of NFTs and stuff. Um, and I'm not immune to that. I mean, I sort of had uh, that point of view to some degree when I first started hearing about all this stuff. Uh, but those differences that I cited earlier uh, made a difference in, in me you know, going, going with uh, Versus to do this. Thank you, Ken. Before we wrap this up, is there anything you'd like to share with everyone watching? One thing is uh, I have, a, I do a, a monthly column called Ink Stains that you can access on my site, which is kenmeyerjr.com. Um, and it's uh, a monthly column that covers uh, old fanzines, comic fanzines, fantasy fanzines of the 70s and the 80s. When I was like in high school uh, and such, um, growing up, they were a big part of my um, 
my life. Uh, and back then, you know, you're just, you're just getting this stuff through the mail, you know, through the postal mail. Um, so I cover a different fanzine uh, every every month. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, I, I do a lot of work for uh, Onyx Path, who sort of took over the uh, vampire and some other stuff from uh, White Wolf Games. I've done hundreds and hundreds of paintings for that company over the years. So I, I keep doing stuff for them. Um, and now that COVID's sort of finally leaving uh, our, our life, our lives, I'm doing more and more appearances. I was a lot of Magic the Gathering tournaments and stuff like that. Um, so uh, I've, I have a list on my Facebook page and a list on my website of the various um, appearances, that, appearances that I'll be doing. So you can always go find that. Before you go, can you please show us the mural you did for your friend's game store? Let's see, I have, I think, let's see how this looks. Well, that sort of gives you a little bit of an idea. It, it's, it's a picture of uh, the mural in his store. I'm going to get off screen, totally off screen, so you can see it. Um, so these are like, there are various magic, the gathering characters. There's like a little couple little Pokemon characters. There's uh, all kinds of characters from various games. Uh, and it was, like I say, it was a huge deal to do. Wow, that is an amazing mural. Yeah, it was, it, it turned out better than I thought it would. I mean, I didn't really know uh, how much uh, detail I would be able to uh, do. And I, and I definitely tailored it. So I, I didn't do like a super huge level of detail because I just, I, I gave him a certain price, try and cut him a break. And I realized, boy, I should have charged a lot more for this because there was a lot of work and a lot of time involved. And I was sore afterwards, man, I tell you. Thank you, Ken, for joining us for this interview. To learn more about Ken, visit his personal website, kenmayerjr.com. And if you'd like to check out his work for verses, you can find that at mentorpop.com slash verses.